Right, welcome to another episode of uh, Wit and Albion Bat Chat, where we're catching up with former players. A uh, bl- bit of a blast from the past, seeing as we're all locked down, can't watch any football. Um, so we've grabbed some uh, some former players, and I'm delighted that on the other end of the computer is uh, Mr. John Brown. How are we, John? I'm fine, thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for, for inviting me to uh, rekindle some happy memories. Yeah, no worries. It's been it's been good catching up with uh, some of the old boys and. Uh, Hearing some of the stories that they've got to tell, so I'm looking forward to uh, to catching up and finding out what uh, what history you've got with uh, with Witten. So let's let's cut to the chase. Uh, how the, how did the move to uh, to Witten sort of establish itself? Uh, I think the move came about ironically enough. I think uh, we played. I was I was at Liverpool as a, a apprentice and a young pro, uh, and then I left Liverpool when I was about nineteen twenty. Uh, and then looking back, it wasn't the best of moves. I went to Winsford. They were playing in the North West Counties League and you come out of pro football, you're a little bit down. Uh, and I enjoyed my time there and the, and the place is lovely. You know, I'm, I'm from Winsford originally. I just thought going to my home club, you know, it'd be easy and piece of cake, but it's non-league's not like that. And it was a bit of an education. Uh, but we, we played with Albion in the first round of the FA Cup uh, in the qualifiers. And we had two good games we, because obviously Whitten were two, three leagues higher in the Northern Premier. And we drew two all at our place, and then we took went to the replay at the, the great central ground, and uh, we just got beat 2-1. A lad who, who makes mine in Winsford, a lad called Paul Quine, and he got two on goals, deflected. And whether well, Stan and uh, Stan noticed me during those games, but at the end of the season, uh, Stevie Ellis, the centre half from Winsford, and the goalkeeper, Kevin Donahue, Donahoe, both signed. And I was in, away in America at the time with me, college education, uh, and I came back after pre-season and that. I think mean, after the first few games of the season. And I think I might met Keith Higgins, the great... Have you ever heard of Keith Higgins? I've not old personally heard of uh, Old player, old school, and he was always around the club and he was like physio coach. I think he bumped into our mic in a pub and he asked me to come down. Then it just snowballed from them. And I signed the same day as a, a lad called Paul Lodge, who was a great player. Taught me so much. He signed from... Uh, he'd been at Everton, played like 40 games in the first yeah. year. And then I think I made my debut with him up at Workshop away on the old cricket ground. So that was how I ended up at Whitton. Let's um, let's chat a little bit about your your time at Liverpool before we move on to to the Whitton memories. So coming through at Liverpool in the mid eighties, I mean, what a team they had at the the time. What was must what was it like for a young lad sort of coming through and you know looking up to you know players who were winning European cups. Yeah, it was uh, when you first go, you're in awe. And I, I went for a couple of years as a schoolboy. And it's totally changed now compared to like it used to be because I live 45, 50 minutes away, which is nothing nowadays or even then. They didn't want me training on a Tuesday and Thursday night with the schoolboys, but it was too far to come. And uh, nowadays, I think if you're seven or eight years old and sign with the club, you would go three, four times a week and travel an, an hour and a half there and back. Yeah. So I used to go through in my, in my school holidays and actually stay over there in Liverpool and train with the first team in the reserves. It was like a 15 year old, and you just know people like Soonus, uh, Rush, Dalgleish. It was just brilliant. Uh, and when we actually signed, become it does become like a day to day job, so you know, you, you lose that awe, and it is uh, because you're worried every every week about you know whether you're going to get a place in the team on the Saturday or Tuesday, and it becomes a bit there. Uh, I found it quite stressful because if you have a bad day at training, uh, you're worried about your shirt on Saturday, and it's it snowballed a bit like that, but the actual club was. It was so down to earth. I'm sure you make you you, you were live a puddle, you on the wiggle. Yeah, uh, a lot. A lot. You know, it was so down to earth. And if you read a lot of the autobiographies, you know the training. Yeah. You just got on with it. It was just five aside, seven asides, a little bit of sprints, and that was it. But the whole club and the family of the club, it was absolutely superb. Superb. Did you did you find it a bit of a? You mentioned before it was a bit of a sort of a. A, you know, a, a reality check, if you like, you know, coming down into the into the non-league game from you know yeah. the, the the heights of Liverpool. Yeah, kind of well, then, you said it, and I, I know I'm not big head, and I, I don't want to come across big head, but in playing at Liverpool, and it was most probably when you were playing like training with the first team, it was most easiest place to play because you got it. it was two or three players to pass to, yeah. and you passed it, you move, and you got it back. Uh, no, this is no disrespect at all to you know like Winsford or the players at Winsford. There were some great players, and I struggled that year. Uh, but you know, it's a totally different game. 
you know, and the pitches were muddy, like, and uh, you give a ball, you'd go for it back and it'd go somewhere else. And then you'd pass somewhere and you give it away and you look terrible. So it was an education for me. Plus, even at the time, you don't say you are a bit down. I think you are a little bit down when you've come out of pro football. Uh, so, yeah, perhaps a bit on a bit of a downer. But Whitten Albion gave me an absolute massive lift to go for like North West Counties to then jump, I think it'd be two or three leagues into the Northern Premier to a club who was looking to get in the Vauxhall Conference. Yeah. It gave me a massive lift and I've got uh, nothing but thanks for the whole club. And it's not just the players and Stan. It was like, you know, the, the way the club was, it was just so well run. Uh, and the supporters, it was absolutely brilliant. And it made me feel part of the club again and want to kick on uh, with, with my career again. Yeah, good stuff. So you talk very fondly about, um, obviously, your time, time at Witten and it being a, another step from Winsford and, and hoping to progress your career. Yeah. How, how, how did you find the, the two years you spent at, at, well, firstly, the Central Ground? The Central Ground was brilliant. It, was, uh, it just had such an atmosphere. I know Winchin Park is a great place and I played there for a year. Uh, but it's just Central Park had something about it. The atmosphere, you'd get three, four hundred, five hundred in, but there was a real good atmosphere. Afterwards, you had the bar on the ground, like overlooking the ground. And it was just such a friendly place. And then it was great because, like, you used to finish training and there was a couple of pubs on the high street and you used to, I think we used to go to the Roebuck after training, which I'm not sure that it's still there opposite the church. Uh, and then after Saturday is the chairman, Rowley, Rowley Hill, uh, who I actually teach his children now. Uh, he owned the uh, Cock Pub at the top of uh, no, uh, the, the street there. And we used to go back to there and he used, he used to be the landlord. And he used to be very, he used to be a good landlord. He used to give us a lot of free drinks. It was just a great place. And he got me buzzed again because there was, there was supporters on, you know, you know, every week there'd be a coach full of supporters going away and cheering for you and chanting for you. Yeah. You know, the, the managers, Stan Allen and John Davidson, leg, Legiston and Legends and non league football were altering him. Uh, yeah. And then you're looking around at some of the players. Paul Lodge was, actually, I keep talking about Paul. He, he helped me so much with non league football the way he played. Uh, and it just got me going again, got me enthusiastic again. I was learning again. And we were playing in a good team, which was winning a lot of games. That yeah. always helps. Yeah, that absolutely. Helps. Yeah. So you talk about good teams um, and missing out on promotion a couple of times in your in your two seasons. It must be sort of bittersweet memories. Obviously, you're having a such a good time, two good seasons, but not quite making that final step. Yeah, it's funny. Like I, I spoke to you at the weekend. I said I got some of my old programs out, and I forgot how high up we were in the league. The first year I was there. We were top of the league for a long time. And then we just faded at the end, I think, perhaps Easter onwards. But looking at looking at that season, looking at the team, we had two players, Mike Whitlow, who's my age, we played in the Mid-Cheshire Schoolboys together, and Neil Parsley. They signed for Leeds United together. Yeah, on the, very good players. The, uh, the last game they played for Whitten on the 5th of November. So we lost two quality players. And, they, you know, they were like, you know, they've gone on to play for Leeds. So they were a big miss out the team. But we, we kicked on from there. We, you know, we kept on winning. But just looking at that squad, my experience now, I think we had a lot of young players, people like myself, Simon Moore, and Graham Ford, Paul Ligginbottom. And perhaps we didn't have enough experience that first year uh, to perhaps go on and uh, get promotion like the whole club wanted and what we're uh, striving for. Uh, obviously, Stan got some more experienced players. And next year, he got like, like Lodge in. He got John Coleman in. I think, I'm, not, I'm not sure what year Paul Cuddy came. But uh, obviously that year, Cone, Cone Dynamos were the main team, weren't they? They were, they were paying full time uh, and they were getting players who should be playing for League One or League Two. They, they, they were signing them up. So one team went up uh, and it was always going to be Cone Dynamos. But that season, looking back, we were well clear in second place. And I think a lot of the fans will remember this tale. We were, I don't know whether you know about it. We, we were well clear in second and then... We must have been 10 or 12 points clear of the gates had come towards the end of the season. And then we started losing games. I think people just relaxed because there was nothing to play for. And I think Stan started experimenting with the team for next year. Mm. And then Gates had overtook us the last but one game of the season. And then we were playing, I think it was Fleetwood or someone on the Saturday, last game of the season. Cone Diamonds folded that week. So they couldn't get, because they thought we were going to hide. I think it was Blackburn Rovers' ground and playing the conference because their mm. ground wasn't good enough. And they folded. So whoever came second got promotion. Yeah. And I think we ended up we ended up drawn at home 
we needed a win and we needed a, I think it was Barrow uh, to slip up and they didn't. So really, we, if we, we threw it away that year, really, we, we were going up by default. You don't mind, do you? You go up any way possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that, that was looking back, that was really, that was quite hard to take because we really threw second place away. Uh, at the time, second place wasn't going to be good enough, but it turned out it was. Yeah, yeah. So that was the end of the second season. But yeah. that was also the first season at the uh, new ground, which was amazing facilities. Uh, but it didn't have the buzz of the central ground. I, I think a lot of players would say that who played at the central ground and played at the new place. Yeah. Uh, and also that year, we had a lot of trouble with the pitch, with it being a new pitch. Mm. We had a lot of games called off. And we actually played a lot, a lot of our home games and cup games at Drillfield in North. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and after Christmas, I think we had a spell. I don't know how many we played, but we played a, a few games down there. Uh, and that pitch, it was heavy at times and muddy, which didn't suit us. Yeah. Right, so let, let's talk about the, the, the grounds and the, obviously the, the, the new stadium that came in in 89. Um, let's talk about the central ground first of all. You, you've mentioned before that it was, it was a special place to play. What made it so special? I played there as a schoolboy, Mid Cheshire. And, you know, when you play for Mid Cheshire schoolboys or any, any like schoolboys, sometimes you get the chance to play on non-league grounds, don't you? Yeah. And you, obviously around us we had Winston, we had Norfolk, we had uh, Witten. But Whitten was the one I always wanted to play at because it was just like small and compact. And there's even when it was a schoolboy game, there's an atmosphere in there. Yeah. And there's something stupid as well. The, remember the old grounds? They used to have the, uh, the boardings behind the goals. Yeah. They used to have coloured in with the football like it was in the bottom corner. It was just little <laughs> things like that, which uh, as a youngster, you just wanted to play on those sort of pitches. But it was the fans at Whitten Albion. Uh, it was the first time... There was a group of supporters who'd go home and away, cheer you on. If you were getting beat, they'd still cheer you on. They'd come in the bar afterwards, they'd have a drink with you. And they were great, absolutely superb. And I think a lot of them are still there now. Uh, I know Joe's still heavily involved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, it was just a great family coming. The centre ground, the pitch was always good as well. Uh, the the care, to, uh, the groundsman there, Spruce, was absolutely brilliant. Uh, and he had his work cut out the second year on, on the new pitch. Yeah. What Spruce used to spend, you know, and that, I, I think I mentioned this to you the other day, when you're young, you don't appreciate all the people at a non-league club who put in the effort yeah. behind the scenes, not playing, and yeah. all the club wouldn't survive. Yeah. And Spruce, he was one of those people, he was at the ground all the time, and there's 10 or 12, 15 people I could name, but if I could remember all the names, but <laughs> just, they're just invaluable for non-league football teams. Yeah. And like when I got a bit older and I was coaching and managing, you just realise what goes on and you appreciate these people who just do it week in, week out, just for the love of the game. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that last game at the central ground, what, yeah. what's, what are your memories of that? Was it quite an emotional sort of occasion? Yeah, it was because obviously there's a lot of people who've been going to the central ground for many, many years. And there was a big turnout. Uh, I think there was things on before the game, like parades and that, and they had like uh, things going on on the pitch. Yeah. I remember something, we, we went out, and I've never done it before. You know, we ran out with the plastic ball each and kicked it into the crowd after all the players decided <laughs> it. Things like that. Uh, yeah, and at the end, there was, a, there was a presentation and there was a bit of ceremony. Uh, I think we drew one each. Mark Edwards got the last ever goal at the central ground. What a player he was as well. Uh, yeah, and it was just emotional. Obviously, I bet more for some of the spectators who have been going, who've been going for years and years, than perhaps yeah. than the players, because like some of the players like me had only been there like a year. Yeah. Uh, so it was more emotional. Obviously, it was a great move to Winchester financially, uh, but within two three years they were bankrupt, weren't they? Mm. Uh, which didn't go now. Well, that, like I said, I actually got by chance I've got the final program, which I didn't really realize I had. And we also got given a medal. Uh, as well, uh, with, with engraved on the back, the final of the game. So I can't believe I kept the final programme. I was never good with programmes. I never kept them. <laughs> Actually, I can't believe 89, how many years ago? Actually, that's 31, 32 years. 32 years, years yeah. It's in pretty good nick. <laughs> but like I said to you, if, you, if you want to use this in some gift or to someone or give it to the club or try raise some money through it, the, the, the Whitney Albans, now, I'll pass them on to you. That's brilliant, John. That's very kind of you. No Especially these uh, these times when we there's got no no income coming through the gates. Yeah. <laughs> it's our times. We know what to do with it. We'll sort it out. We'll sort it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so the move the move to Winsham, obviously, 
a lot of people, even still today, a lot of supporters hark back to the, the good times at the central ground. Yeah. The move to, to Winsham, what, what was it like? Obviously, you mentioned the, the, the pitch wasn't the best at, at that first season, but in terms of the facilities and stuff, what was it? What was the difference? Well, the first year was so exciting because we actually obviously saw the venue with nothing on it, you know, and it wasn't built. And then you see it building up throughout the season. And then you could, and then it looked amazing. And then the changing rooms, because you, you know, at all the uh, uh, non league grounds like the changing rooms, how cold they are. The central grounds are a bit like that. And then all of a sudden, you've got these fancy, you know, tile changing rooms with proper showers in. And, and then you've got the big function room as well, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, which obviously, you know, was superb. And then you had light rooms off it for like, you know, directors and executives and that. And like, you got that stand room down the side, which was fantastic. But it just didn't have the same atmosphere. And, it, and, and up there as well, it got windy. You know, yeah, a lot of the games. It doesn't get cold. <laughs> it gets cold, it gets windy. But yeah, it's a, it's a great stadium. Uh, you know, in the new one, they had to do it as a club, but the centre ground had something special about it. It's a bit like very similar to Marines Ground. I know Marines is only three sided, but mm. Marines Ground was very similar. They were great to play against it the same way. Yeah. Put four or five hundred people against Marine, and there's a hell of an atmosphere in that ground. Yeah. Well, why do you think it was that the, there wasn't the same atmosphere? Because presumably it's the same, it's the same punters going through the the turnstiles. Why? What do you what do you think? What what difference I, does the stadium make? I, do you think? I think it's just because perhaps it's the acoustics. Well, a, yeah, a little bit further away from the uh, the, the pitch, mm -hmm. uh, the spectators. Also, perhaps a little bit more open. It's open on that far side a bit, isn't it? Where yeah, Whitten was, yeah. Whitten was uh, terraced all the way down on the far side. Yeah. So perhaps just that, really. But it's hard to put a, a finger on it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Some people made for the winching part, but I think generally people go talk about the central ground and more atmosphere. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about you, you mentioned when we spoke on the phone the other day about some memorable incidents that you uh, <laughs> you remember particularly. <laughs> I just some funny like, moments you want to you talk about. Or a few of the players, man. You made some of the incidents or games I remembered. Uh, obviously, I think we talked about the Vicks game when we played Vicks in the Mid Cheshire Senior Cup final. Yeah. Uh, which was a big game because we were trying to get in the conference then. And Vicks had been in the conference for years and years, and it was a way like for us to test us. And then um, my brother mentioned this the other day. He said that, that night it absolutely threw it down, uh, and it was, it was it was windy. But we uh, we beat them two 0 so we knew we were good enough to compete with teams at the conference. It was just getting there. Yeah. Uh, I think Steve Craven got a goal. I think uh, Tony Jarvis got a goal. Uh, but uh, it was a good game. But we deserved the win and. Uh, it was always hard to get two goals past the year. You remember the Norfolk Vicks keeper, Jim Ryan. He played for Norfolk Vicks for, I don't know, many, many a year. So it was yeah. actually good to get one over on them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some other game. Uh, no, sorry. Go on. Yeah, go on. If you've, got, if you've got them there, go yeah, for them. No, only just quick brief comments. Just like some of the fans may remember them. I always remember one where John Davidson came. Now, he was a player. He, he came when he was 35 from Altrincham. And he played centre half, and he wasn't the biggest John, but obviously he played in that altering team. I think he played left back there or left midfield, and he was absolutely superb in his experience, the way he brought the lads on. And what a gentleman as well he was. I, mean, I just remember we drew against North Ferriby in the FA Cup away. Uh, and we came back to our place on the Tuesday night and we won 3 0, 3 1. Uh, I think it's the only time I've actually witnessed somebody score a hat trick with three penalties. <laughs> and I've got a feeling we could have all been in the same half. So we took three pens and he scored them on. Yeah, all in the same spot, I bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then that, that, that one to perhaps one of, the, uh, one of the biggest disappointments in the game. I, I was always one, one of those. I always wanted to play in the FA Cup first round proper. Yeah. I was, quite, you know, I was only 21 and uh, we had a great run and we got drawn against Congleton away. And we were top of the Northern Prem and they were bottom of the league below. Mm. And we went to Congleton on a... Horrible cold winter's day. We, we, we battered them, but we got turned over 1 0. I was absolutely gutted after that game, like a lot of the lads were. Yeah. Uh, so, so we lost that. But, and then Congleton got a great cup tie. They got a uh, crew, crew away. Uh, and it would have been great for you. It would have been a great one for Witten, yeah. Uh, yeah. Game, but I finally got the first round of the FA Cup once and drew Marine. I used to put, we used to play Marine every <laughs> 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 yeah. Marie, Marie at home. Uh, that was when it was at Staley Bridge. 
Uh, we actually beat them. We beat them on pens after a replay for each. Uh, oh, good second leg there, uh, second round. Time. We got Carlisle away, which wasn't too bad. Okay, too bad. Uh, go on. Sorry. Now you mentioned a lot of the the you know you you played with a lot of good players. Yeah. If you were to put put together a sort of a best eleven, one to eleven, what would you? Who would uh, oh, who, who gets in that team? I've got a team here, but it's. I wouldn't say it's the best 11, but I wouldn't mind talking about some of the lads because when I actually left, which was like October in my third season, all the Cone lads, we mentioned Cone folded at the yeah. end of that the season before. Whitten was having the money. They went and got these Cone lads yeah. and they brought in some brilliant players who were, who were then played with the other clubs and played against a lot. The lads were like uh, the keeper, Mason. McNellis was a hell of a centre-half. Yeah. Then you had the lads in midfield. You had Grimshaw. You had Stuart Anson who were played with it, two other clubs. And a great lad. Uh, Joe Connor, and then they had the great striker Carl Thomas as well. So all them came in, and that season, when the season left, it was only going to go on winners of the league, and it was obviously Witten. So a lot of them would have gotten the team, but I didn't play with them long enough. Yeah. Uh, I've got my only eleven, which some fans may remember some of the names based on like perhaps character and a bit of uh, humour. Yeah. Uh, I, I mentioned at the start that the Winsford keeper came uh, with us when when yeah. I signed that first. Kevin Donahue, and he was a good keeper, very good. Uh, but I remember Stan uh, went and got uh, Robin Simpson. I think he's an old favourite of the witness. He came back to the club about November time. He was a hell of a keeper, never shut up. So he'd be my goalkeeper and what a lad he was off the pitch. Uh, you couldn't shut him up. He was in imp impersonations everywhere. He was superb. Uh, and then I've, I've most probably got the slowest back four ever. But there's lads have, again, played with other clubs. I mean, back four would be... You've got a fairly uh, slow one right now, but go on. Well, yeah, but <laughs> so the current is, team's got a fair, fairly slow back four, but go I'm, on. I'm going to put John, JD left, left back, even though he played centre-half all the time with me. But he was just absolute quality player. And you don't play for Altingham when they beat all those league teams. And he played for them for years. And he, and he came very, like I said, eight, old in his career, 35, and he was still head and shoulders. Uh, and he was playing centre-half. I bet he was only five foot eight, five foot nine, but he never got beat in the air. He was brilliant. So I've put him in at left back. The two centre halves, I'd have to get my old mate from Winsford, Stevie Ellis. Stevie, if you looked at him, you think he was from walk 10 yards. He, he used to smoke all the time. He had a worse tan than me, he looked like a tin of white paint. He, he looked like he had an ironing board down his shirt and he couldn't run. But what a centre half. And he was so dominant in the air, nasty, nasty as well. So I'd have him at centre half. Along with uh, Paul Cuddy. Now, he was a legend with Whitten Albion. He yeah. came, what a player he was. Uh, wouldn't cross Paul Cuddy ever. He'd, he'd kick his own grandma, as, as he would say, but the, one of the nicest lads off the pitch you get. And right back, I played with this lad a couple of places. It's Joe Fagan's son, Mick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mick, Mick when uh, Neil left, Neil Parsley left, he played behind me. I played a lot of time at right, uh, right wing early yeah. on. Right wing, I wasn't fast myself. Right, right midfield in those days, and he taught me through the game all the time. He, he had me on a piece of string where I should be standing, where I should be going. So I'd have certainly Mick Fagan at right back. I'm going to go for a midfield three. Paul Lodge, uh, biggest moaner ever, but what a lad! He looked after me on and off the pitch. Um, There's loads of young lads like me, Higgy, Grainford, uh, Simon Moore. We played wide. Lodgy, wherever he passed it, we should have been there. So if he dropped his shoulder, <laughs> he'd kick it in the corner. We were standing square waiting for it. What are you doing there? You should have been in the corner flag. Then we do the opposite next time. We get told off again. But he taught me so much about non-league football. Just simple things, helping it on round the corner. Yeah. And he was a great player. And again, off the pitch, looked after me really well. Next lad was an unbelievable midfielder. I didn't play a great deal with him, Witten. But I played a lot with him at Staley Bridge and Ashton. Uh, like I called Stuart Anderson. He could run all day, hard as nails, scored a lot of important goals. Very similar to the other lad in midfield, Andy Grimshaw. I had to find a place for yeah. him, though I didn't play a great deal for him, uh, with him. But he, he was just a great, scored a lot of goals, got forward. And you couldn't get past Ando and Grimmy in midfield. They were really, really strong, because I played against him a few times as well. We spoke the choice up front for forwards. Uh, John Coleman, who's now manager of Ackerton. Yeah. Because I played under him at Ashton United, uh, top lad, he looked after me uh, when I was at Ashton and at Witten. Uh, funniest lad I've ever known. Uh, scored goals from anywhere. Small, small lad, but he got a lot of headers. 
Yeah. Uh, and then the other lad who's a, uh, I think he was a favourite at the central ground, then moved on to Winchin Park, uh, Mark Edwards, had a left foot, he could absolutely smack it. Uh, he came and joined me at uh, Staley Bridge. Okay. Uh, another player. And then another, another lad again, I only played with him for a short time, but I played against him a lot, a lad called Carl Thomas, yeah. who came from Kona. His movement was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, his movement was unbelievable. Um, and sure. then sorry, go, go on. on. Sorry. No, you no can't sorry. I'm sure the, the, the supporters who are watching this right now, I know a lot of the, the, the ones that go back that you know back that far yeah. to the 80s and the 90s, I'm sure those names yeah. will conjure up many a, many a happy memory. Yeah, some, uh, some great players that, from the past. I moved to Stalebridge and we got promoted to the year after Witten, I think. Yeah. Uh, it was a good move for me and I got in the conference. But with my connections, a lot of the lads came with me. Because uh, obviously they were a bit, they were like got forced out through the Cone lads as well. But they, they were the better players than us. Uh, lads like Gary Boyle, he what you know he was a good player. Uh, Paul Higginbottom came. Uh, there was about four or five who came on to uh, Stalebridge with me. Yeah. And then sort of following you, you towards the end of your your playing days, you moved into assistant managing and managing in non-league. What was uh, what was that experience like? I loved it. Just it happened naturally, really, by chance. I, I did get, I did sign for Congleton at the end of one season, and the bloke put me assistant manager, uh, and I was still playing. And then, and then I moved on to me. I, I was gone. I did my knee when I was about 31, 32, and I was really struggling with my knee. And uh, I should have called it quits because I've got to have two knee replacements this year, oh, both wow. done at the same time. So, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then I came signed for, for me where I live now, Old Sager. And they were playing in Northwest One. Uh, and they were just a set of young lads with a few old heads. And uh, the manager there, Greg Clowes, and uh, his assistant, Dozer, they just didn't let me naturally, because I've always had something to say in the changing rooms, perhaps too much at times. And I always helped the young lads, you know, in coaching when we were training. So it just naturally happened. I started taking training sessions and that. And then we got promoted. And then I just stayed on with the management staff there. They never really asked me. It just happened. And then uh, we, we we actually get, we got promoted to the Unibond, which was brilliant. Okay. So yeah. like also, we got to the, and then I was having an operation when we got promoted that year. Uh, so at the end of the season, I was going to be off work for three months. So I thought it was a good time to just call it quits. Uh, and then I had the operation and I never missed it. I'd been going like non-league training, you know, three times yeah. a week. I had this operation. All of a sudden, didn't need it. Yeah. Uh, a, sorry, that, that was a, I actually managed Old Sager for a year, yeah. and that's when I had the operation. Mm. Uh, and again, we did quite well there. We, we were North West Counties Premier, we came at 10th or something, 11th. I was enjoying it, no trouble. And then I was going to have three months off work, so I thought I'd, I can't be working and uh, running the football team at the same time. Yeah. Three months off work. So I, uh, I thought, well, I'll just come back to it in three months' time. But I never missed it, never missed it at all. Okay. So uh, I just chill out a bit now. Yeah. So nothing you sort of fancy dipping your toe back in there? Well, uh, a mate of mine who actually used to play for Norwich, Richie Mitchell, he's been, he got a job out six, seven years ago scouting uh, for Ross County. Okay. And then the, the manager and the number two there, Jim McIntyre and Billy Dodd, they moved on to Dundee and somewhere else. So yeah. he, he was scouting. So he, he had me out Saturday, Tuesday, just going to watch games, which was quite nice. Because you okay. just turn up, get a nice seat. Uh, <laughs> I used to take the daughter as well. She used to like it. Yeah. A bit of scrap at half time, and then just obviously we got to Scotland at times to watch some of the Scottish Premier League games and that, so that was quite nice. But no, I didn't, no way with commitment now. Now, okay, no. I know that you're uh, you're in the, the the teaching game at the minute, so yes. hats off to you, my friend, for uh, everything that you're doing for our uh, our nation's children. Yeah, well, you just got to get on with it, haven't you? But the nurses are the ones, aren't they? The nurses and the care care workers are the yeah. ones who are absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, teachers as well doing a, a stealing job. I work in a school as well, so yeah. I know how much hard work is is going on. And obviously, obviously the nurses and stuff are doing a vital job uh, during this uh, just this horrible COVID uh, situation. In terms of the football now, then, so you, you say you don't miss being involved in terms of coaching, management, scouting, or whatever. But do you do you still watch a lot of football? I can't lie there. There's a, a club set up here, unbelievable a club called El Sage of Swans. Yeah. And uh, me, one of my mates, uh, is a, well, my two mates, managers and assistant manager, uh, they've been here for like three years. And I helped them out when they go on holiday. 
and they, and they started off to, it's in the Staffordshire League, so it was like two leagues below the pyramid. Yeah. The last two seasons, we got promoted twice, and they're now in the, like the uh, Premier League, which is the one below the pyramid. Okay. And, and before the lockdown, we were we were top of that. We were top of the, the league then. So we got a, and it's run ever so well. It's called All Sager Swans. Yeah. Uh, so they distance themselves from the other All Sager. Yeah. Just got a hell of a setup. We've got a brand new sports hub. We've got a reserve team now. There's 15, 20 junior teams. Oh, uh, but first is now what the manager's done in the number two is got people like me who've played a bit. Don't want to get in it fully, but we're around yeah. the place talking yeah, to the yeah. lads help. And that keeps me involved. Okay, keep me young yeah. and lads as well. Yeah, that's good. To, good to keep your eye in there, isn't it? It is. We've got to say, if you fancy a pre-season game with your reserves or something, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll get on. I'm sure we can sort something out. I mean, I, I've got no, I've got no power in such decisions, but yeah, <laughs> I'm sure I can have a word. <laughs> John, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Hundred and what was it? Hundred and five games. I said twelve goals. Um, obviously, enjoyed your your time and played with a lot of good players and yeah. reminisce very fondly about the club. So it's been a pleasure catching up with you, mate. And uh, keep in touch. And uh, hopefully, we can uh, we can reconvene when uh, when football is back up and running, and we can uh, we can meet up for a pint. Well, I know we, I'm going to pop down for a game this year. Paul Hickenbottom said we'd come down and have a few pints, go the Witten Chimes before the game and uh, have a few pints with the fans. But I'd just like to thank the fans and that and the board and the directors when I that time there. You don't, you don't really appreciate it at the time, but looking back, Witten have been a lot to do with me like enjoying the rest of my non-league career. So thank you very much. Right, John, it's been a pleasure. We'll sign off. Thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time. Okay.